Welcome back everyone. In this video, we'll look at some substantial problems with Islam and see how Muslims not only ignore them, but also recast them as problems for Christianity. This is an effective coping mechanism for Muslims who struggle with their faith, not only because they suppress the problems they have with their own religion, but they bury them under an additional layer of polemics to be as intellectually isolated from them as possible. For the first example, let's talk about the divinity of Jesus. Shabir Ali used to, and I'm sure still does, love the theory of the evolution of Jesus' divinity throughout the Gospels. You start in Mark, and Jesus isn't divine, but by the time you get to John, he is. This has been and will continue to be parroted by other Muslims as well. Here's an example. In the Gospels, I see a very apparent evolution of Christology. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is presented as a suffering prophet. In Matthew, he's suddenly the open Messiah. Luke calls him Soter, which means Savior. In the Gospel of John, he's finally the Logos, the divine word that initiates creation. So in a span of less than 50 years, you go from Jesus being a prophet to God in the flesh, you see? However, this is simply a lie. The Christology of Mark's Gospel cannot be higher. I've done an entire series on this topic. The playlist is in the pinned comment you want to check it out. Mark's supremely high Christology is widely recognized in New Testament scholarship. But Muslims, don't take it from me. Take it from someone you actually respect, Bart Ehrman. Even he says that Jesus is divine in Mark's gospel. Uh, you're saying that Mark portrays Jesus as divine, mm -hmm. and that, isn't, that has no bearing on what I was saying. I didn't deny that. I think that Mark does see Jesus as divine. Other scholars like David Capes have shown that belief in Jesus' divinity can be traced back to the earliest years of the New Testament church. That's before Mark's gospel was written. So much for that polemic. But what is the polemic hiding? Muslims need to realize that there was a development with their own religion, with Muhammad as a prophet. Historians are now calling the traditional Muslim narrative into question. Let me give a couple of examples. The first dated mention of Muhammad is in 691. Terms like Islam and Muslim aren't used in Arabic texts before 690. The name Muhammad is mentioned in the Syrian chronicles around the 7th and 8th centuries. However, he's called a king with no mention of his religious role, which according to the traditional Muslim account would have been extremely important by that point in history. Why doesn't history know of Muhammad before the end of the 7th century? Abdul Malik now seems largely responsible for developing the idea of Muhammad as a prophet and the Quran as scripture, while the Abbasids fabricated, forged, and plagiarized their way to forming the traditional count of the origins of Islam and constructing the life of the now prophet of Islam titled Muhammad, the praised one. Muslims, if you want to talk about theological development, look at the history of your own religion instead of making false accusations against Christianity. Number two, Constantine decided what books would be in the New Testament at the Council of Nicaea. Records of what happened at the Council were kept. I've posted a link to the 20 canons of Nicaea in the pinned comment. You can read them if you want. I'm not going to because I don't want you to fall asleep. But there's nothing about Constantine deciding what books are in the New Testament. Muslims just make things up in their ignorance of church history and desire to criticize the Bible, of which the Quran only speaks approvingly. How ironic. But what is this polemic hiding? According to Muslim sources, their own authorities have made significant changes to the Quran after the death of Muhammad. Zaid collected the Quran from stones, palm stalks, and animal hides. Nobody knows who wrote those parts of the Quran or why Zaid had to use that material such a short time after Muhammad's death. I thought the Quran was memorized. Uthman was having trouble with different Qurans, so he selected one reading, made new copies, and burned the old ones. al ajaj made more changes to the Quran in the early 8th century and added diacritical marks, which can drastically alter the meaning of the text. He also issued his own recension and destroyed competing copies, like Uthman. Differences in the Qurans continued to be problems into the 8th century, 9th century, and 10th century when Ibn Majahid and others came up with the different kiraat, or readings. Some said there were seven canonical readings, some ten, some fourteen. For centuries after Muhammad's death, various Muslim authorities made significant decisions about what Qurans would be destroyed and which ones were canonical. While Constantine deciding the canon of the New Testament is a polemical myth, Muslim sources describe Constantine-like figures imposing their decisions on the Quran. Of course, it doesn't stop there. 
The doctrine of the eternal Quran that many Muslims believe today was decided by later authorities as well around the mid-9th century. Muslims, if you want to talk about authorities imposing doctrine on scripture after the fact, look at the Constantines in your own history. Number three, look at what blank did. The God of the Bible approves of blank. You can fill in the blanks. I see this frequently with the story of Lot in the Old Testament. These polemics are among the dumbest I've heard. Muslims read about some sinful act by a biblical character, and then they assume that sin is condoned by God. Thus, the God of the Bible condones sin. It's beyond stupid. But what is this polemic hiding? What if I could point you to a filthy, vile, repulsive person in the history of Islam? And what if I could show you that his actions were approved by the God of Islam? Even Muslims know who I'm talking about at this point. Muhammad. Muhammad had intercourse with a girl so young she was taken off of a swing set to go to his house, carrying her dolls along with her. According to Muslim sources, playing with dolls is allowed if you haven't reached puberty. Muhammad's child bride is repeatedly described as a young, immature girl. And of course, it doesn't stop there. According to a Sahih Hadith, Muhammad had sex with his slave girl, which didn't make his other wives too happy. Luckily, Allah came to his rescue and revealed a verse to bail Muhammad out of trouble. Muhammad also had sex with all of his wives in a single night with only one bath. He employed his child bride to scrape semen off of his clothes so he would be in his Friday best to go to the mosque and worship the God who allowed him to have all of that sex with his wives and slave girls, not only in this life, but in the next, where numerous large-breasted virgins were waiting in Allah's one-stop sex shop, Muslims call paradise. Muhammad called women intellectually deficient, commanded them to breastfeed adult men, condoned female genital mutilation, and approved of the brutal assassinations of people who criticized him. In fact, after reading all of Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, it is hard to imagine a more boneheaded, depraved, foul man than Muhammad. But what's the moral problem for Muslims? Ah yes, it's with biblical characters like Lot and his daughters, even when what they're doing is explicitly forbidden by God. Muhammad, on the other hand, is the best example for Muslims according to the Quran, and Surah 465 says that you aren't a Muslim unless you make that vile, filthy man a judge over you. Thus, Muhammad's legacy, as portrayed in the Hadith, lives on in the form of Sharia law, which explains why it's so repulsive. Whether it's lies about the evolution of Jesus' deity, Constantine's role in the New Testament canon, or ignorant, childish polemics about biblical characters like Lot, next time you hear a polemic from Muslims against Christianity, think, is this a straightforward polemic, or is it yet another example of insurmountable problems Muslims have with their own religion, which, to avoid dealing with, they both suppress and recast as polemics against Christianity. Thanks for watching.